Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I am working on my third Cindy Lauper doll and this one is a special commission for the Cindy Lauper Museum in Orlando, Florida. And this version is from the photo shoot of her 2008 album Bring It to the Brink where she's wearing this beautiful teal dress and some of the photos in the dress it looks like it's a bit blue but prior to making the dress I sent some swatches to the customer and we matched the fabric and it's a little bit more greenish blue than it may appear. So in this video, I'll be showing you how I did the face up, styled the hair, and a little bit of the dress construction. So stay tuned to the end of the video for some photos of the final look. So I started out with removing the factory paint and I rooted her with some ivory alpaca yarn. And then I gave her four coats of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut. As you can see over to the left, I'm using my phone for some reference photos. So this customer wanted me to make sure that I gave her, her her classic squinty eye look, so that's what I'm working on here. And I always start out with some white to like a white base for the eyes so I can determine the shape before I start laying in the color and the upper eyelid shading. So here I'm using a Prismacolor Black. I've been using that quite often with some of the black marks that I make. And then I'm going in with the waterline in the, wa the waterline and tear duct with a terracotta Derwent watercolor pencil. I'm just doing some shading with a couple of different peach and pinkish colors. And going in with some white with uh, pan, these are pan pastels which I'm using and I'm blending that out with some colorless blender. The supplies I use are in the description box below. I'm giving her a bit of a natural lip and I'm blending that out with some white for the, on the bottom lip. I always make the bottom lip a little bit lighter than the top. try to capture the shape or the the characteristics of the photo or the person that I'm working on I always make sure that the nostrils are a similar shape that really helps when capturing the kind of features of the person that I'm working on it usually helps I'm giving her some eyebrows with this Caran d'Ache watercolor pencil in a golden brownish color. So in the reference photos that I showed at the beginning of the video, she has sort of a silvery smoky eyeshadow and I'm using some black pan pastel as a base and then when I go into like the uh, the just the center of the lid I'll add a little bit of the silver FX uh, shimmer powder and I'm also adding a little bit of gold as a highlight on top of that so just kind of a pattern like I would do if I were making a smoky eye on a person And what I did with that is I sealed it after I did that color shading on the eyelid. I sealed it with a few coats of Mr. Super Clear, probably about two or three coats. And then I did another layer. So that's something you can't quite tell that I did that by watching this video. So I'm going to call that out. Giving her some highlights to just kind of capture the shape of her nose. And blending that out with Colorless Blender. I've been asked a couple times about how how the colorless blender works and if it's worth it to start using it and one of the things that I use it for the most aside from blending blush when I add blush I like to use that because it kind of tones it down and blends it out very nicely but it also um, if I color with some pencil and make some marks that I don't want like for the highlight on the nose I was using a pencil 
And then when I went back over it with the colorless blender, it really blends it out where you can't see those pencil marks. So that's another reason I use that and it's very helpful. So I do recommend it. It may not be for everyone though. It's just something that's a helpful tool for me. So I'm going in with Cindy Lauper's green eyes. And I go around the outline of the eye with green and then I kind of blend it into towards the center with white just to give a little bit of a blend. When you're doing a squinty eye expression, it's important to keep the the uh, iris and the pupil, everything kind of to scale as if the eyes were open. So most of that will be hidden by the eyelids when it's a squinty expression. So you want to keep it the same size as if the eyes were open, but most of it will be hidden, if that makes sense. Going back and smoking out the eyes a little bit more. When I do a smoky eye like this, this uh, Pearl FX shimmer powder really makes a difference. I really love how it gives that shimmer and you can see it in some of the angles, uh, but in person it looks even better. Going in with the eyelashes, doing them just a slightly more angled than I would have if the eyes were open. Apologize for my hand covering up a lot of the work that I'm doing there. If you guys would like me to change my cam camera angle or if there's something that's not working for you, please let me know in the comment section below. I'll be happy to try to accommodate. Always like constructive criticism. <laughs> so on to the hair. So I, like I said, I rooted her with some ivory alpaca yarn. And then here I'm just thinning it out. I'm using my thinning shears to just take out a lot of that bulk. And you can see how it just really lightens it up. And then I'm adding some hair gel to hold the style. I always add a little bit of unscented hair, hair gel to the styles just so they can hold up over time. It also helps with the straightening, keeping that straight look. So here I'm using my mini flat iron that I use on the dolls. I use it for doll hair and for their costumes. And this really makes a nice clean flat look to the hair. Just separating it into small sections and that helps make the hair look even straighter. So once straightened then I gave her a little bit of a trim to give her some layers. This look that she has in the video or in the photos she has um, some pieces coming out so it looks like I may have cut off what I was doing there so I just pulled it into sort of a messy ponytail or a messy bun in the back and then pulled out some pieces so I apologize for not showing that here I'm just showing how I gathered the skirt I didn't use a pattern I just had to kind of measure against the doll and do some fittings throughout and there is the final look so if you like this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more Cindy Lauper dolls because she has a huge fandom that has contacted me. So there will be more coming along with some other char characters that I'm doing for the convention coming up. So thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.